When I started out on my fitness journey years ago, I wasn't really too interested in getting buff. I really just wanted to be healthy and have great endurance, but I also wanted to burn off all this extra fat, and my first thought was to do a bunch of cardio. Boy, was that a super slow process of sitting on treadmills hours on hours each week. I felt like my endurance was getting better, but I still wasn't seeing my belly fat going away. This is when someone told me about weight training and how it can burn way more fat than just steady state cardio. This got me super interested and I started searching for any and every piece of information I could find. And I definitely found a great new way to burn fat way faster and actually started enjoying my workouts. So today I would like to share this information with you. But what really helped was not just learning new workouts, but actually understanding the process of how to do them and how they got my whole body into a super high metabolic rate. It had me sweating harder than ever, and I actually started to see my waistline slimming down. The decision of whether to do cardio or weights first in a workout routine isn't one size fits all and depends significantly on your fitness goals, personal preferences, and what you're hoping to achieve through your exercise regimen. Let's get right into it and get you to start understanding how to incorporate weight training into your workouts and also when you should be doing cardio and how much to do for it to actually be effective and not waste your time. If losing weight and or muscle gain is your primary goal, it's beneficial to start with weight training. This approach ensures your muscles are primed and ready for more intense workouts. On the other hand, if you're aiming for enhanced endurance or cardiovascular health, beginning with cardio prepares your body for the challenges of weight training stamina and builds a strong cardiovascular foundation. It's generally advised to tackle the most strenuous part of your workout when you have the most energy. This means if you're planning on a particularly intense session of either cardio or weights, you might want to start with the one that you are going to put the most energy into. Research varies, but an ACE commission study found that doing cardio after strength training led to a higher heart rate for the same workout intensity and duration. This could mean a more intense workout without necessarily increasing the difficulty level. However, it's crucial to note that exercise sequence should ultimately be tailored to individual goals rather than a strict guideline. The choice also depends on the specifics of your workout. For example, if you're focusing on endurance performance, like running or triathlon training, starting with cardio might be best. But if your main goal is to get leaner or improve strength, beginning with strength training could be more beneficial. But I know most of us, even the ones trying to bulk up, don't like all this extra fat laying around. So let me share a little secret about weightlifting that most people probably don't know about when starting their fitness journey. Weight training or strength training is actually the most effective way to boost your metabolic rate, which is the rate at which your body burns calories. This increase in metabolic rate occurs for several reasons. One of the most significant effects of weight training is muscle growth or hypertrophy. Muscle tissue is metabolically active, meaning it requires more energy or calories to maintain than fat tissue. By increasing muscle mass through weight training, your body uses more calories to maintain itself, even when at rest. This is crazy, right? This effect leads to an increase in basal metabolic rate, or BMR, the rate at which your body burns calories while at rest, making it easier to maintain a calorie deficit or surplus depending on your goals. Trust me, my first month of weight training, I was sweating harder than any cardio I've ever done. Especially when you only take a one minute or less break in between sets, it really gets your body shredding that unwanted fat and replaces it with lean muscle. Weight training can also lead to a state known as EPOC, or often referred to as the afterburn effect. This phenomenon occurs when the body requires additional oxygen to restore itself to its pre-exercise state. The processes involved in recovery include hormone balancing, replenishment of fuel stores, and cellular repair. This increased oxygen consumption boosts the metabolic rate for hours and sometimes even days after the workout has ended. The intensity of the workout, or the total volume, weight lifted times reps and sets, and your fitness level can affect the duration and magnitude of the afterburn effect, so make sure you go hard. Weight training is an intense form of exercise that requires significant energy expenditure. While the immediate calorie burn might not be as high as some forms of cardio, the overall effect on metabolism, when combined with the afterburn effect, can lead to greater total calories burned over time. This is why I changed to doing cardio at the end of my workouts instead of warming up with it. Getting your body into this state and then running for 10 minutes will burn more calories than you have ever seen possible. Also, another great perk is that regular weight training improves the body's sensitivity to insulin, 
the hormone responsible for regulating blood sugar levels. Improved insulin sensitivity allows your body to use glucose more effectively, which can help in managing or preventing type 2 diabetes. This metabolic improvement further supports a healthy metabolism, and as we know, having a healthy metabolism is key. Even if you think you were born with a slow metabolism, this can change that very quickly. And as we age, there's a natural decline in muscle mass and metabolic rate. So engaging in regular weight training can counteract these effects by preserving muscle mass and keeping the metabolic rate elevated. This helps in preventing the age-related increase in fat mass and decrease in strength and functional ability. So in summary, Incorporating regular weight training into your exercise regimen can thus be a powerful tool for improving body composition, metabolic health, and overall physical fitness. Now let's get into a few different ways you can do cardio without having to be on the treadmill for hours on hours. The most effective way is to do weight training first, get yourself tired, and then you won't need to do cardio for that long. But let's say you really want to ramp up your endurance or you're trying to train for a marathon. A balanced training plan generally includes running three to five times per week incorporating a mix of long runs, tempo runs, and easy pace runs. The aim is to build endurance without overtraining. For instance, a typical week might feature a long run to build distance, a tempo run for speed, and an easy run for recovery. Incorporating strength training can also help enhance your running performance by improving overall body and core strength, which is crucial for stabilizing the body during runs. It's critical to gradually increase your mileage, ensuring not to exceed a 10% increase week over week. Incorporating intervals and tempo runs into your training can improve aerobic capacity and make your easy runs feel easier. Also, on the days where I feel the most energy, I like to incorporate high-intensity interval training, or HIT into my workouts. An easy example of this, instead of jogging on a treadmill for long distances, I will up the speed to where I'm sprinting at a pretty good pace. I will go all out for 20 seconds and then walk for 30 seconds, and I will repeat this about 10 times. Another great one is the fan bikes. The same thing, go as fast as you can for 20 seconds and then take a 30 second break. I find the fan bikes are a little easier to stop and go because of how slow it takes for a treadmill to pick up pace and slow down. But it's a good starting point and gets a more intense cardio workout in way less time. And don't forget the importance of rest days. Rest days are crucial for muscle recovery and injury prevention. Engaging in low-impact cross-training activities on rest days, such as cycling, swimming, or yoga, can support fitness without the high impact of running. But make sure you get enough rest, because when you go into a workout at 100% or more, you will really see so much more of a difference. So basically, in my opinion, I think it's usually better to do weight training first, as this raises your metabolic rate and enables you to get more out of your cardio at the end of your session. And remember, consistency is key. Try to not take more than about one to two days of resting and get back in there and go hard again. You should be able to get efficient weight training and cardio done all within about an hour each day. 45 minutes of weight training led by 10 to 15 minutes of heavy cardio or HIIT cardio is a really good start. By doing weight training and cardio together, you will already be started on a better path than I was when I first started out. I honestly wasted about a whole year of doing steady state cardio and not seeing any fat come off. I was stuck at the same weight for a long time until I started incorporating weight training followed by cardio at the end. And especially replacing HIIT training as my cardio makes a huge difference. Now, I honestly can't imagine doing my workouts without weight training. Sure, with cardio I was gaining stamina, but boy did that make such a huge difference when I started doing both together. Also, remember to try and eat more lean protein and start watching your calories as your diet and nutrition also have a huge impact on your metabolic rate and losing weight. Now that I'm happy with my body mass, I've been able to pretty much eat how I want to and I don't gain any weight because of the afterburn effect. Also very important, remember to stay hydrated during your workouts as your muscles need to be hydrated to get the nutrients they need to build more lean muscle. Muscle will replace your fat and keep you burning calories even outside of the gym or your workout sessions. And having the extra stamina from doing cardio will also enable you to go longer and get more out of your exercises. Well, thank you for hanging out with me and diving into some great knowledge that I've gained over the years. And I can tell you following this method is way more fun and it really works. No one wants to spend years at the gym just to see very minimal results. We all want fast results and a fun, engaging way to exercise. If you found this video helpful, hit that subscribe button. It keeps me motivated to keep creating more content for you guys as I know this health and fitness journey can be a little rough at first. 
but having the right people and knowledge around you can make an extreme difference. So remember to keep flexing what you have learned and then glow bright with the results. I'll see you next time, fam.